There's something quite nostalgic about ordering your weekend Chinese takeaway treats. You know the ones, the ones you've been craving since the week began. It starts with the ritualistic scan of the menu, just like we've been doing for the last 20 years, and yet we still order the very same dishes week in, week out. So let's start with one of the all-time takeaway favorites, a Chinese beef curry. Now, like in all Chinese cookery, we have to get the ingredients ready. So you can see already on the table that I have an arrangement of chopped garlics and garam masalas and curry powders, but I still need to chop my veggies. So I'm gonna start off with a nice onion. Now to make this curry outstanding and a little bit different to the ones that you normally get in a Chinese takeaway, we've got to give it a little bit of love and attention and care. So take your time with this. You know, this is part of the beauty of cooking. Enjoy yourself. So, and watch your fingers, because I nearly got my fingers. So I'm gonna take off the outer layers of the skin. Technically, I could leave this in this dish because because I'm making this enriched curry sauce and I'm gonna sieve it off later, you can leave skin on at this point. This takes me back to working in my dad's restaurant where we would literally be thrown a sack of onions weighing about 20 kilos. And by the time we'd finish peeling and chopping, our hands would be black, just down to the natural juices that come from the onion. And you'd wash your hands and three days later, it would still, still smell like onion, which is bizarre. I'm just gonna chop this into nice sizes. So when I saute it in the pan, it cooks down and it goes nice and soft. And we're gonna try and get a little bit of that caramelization. Now that caramelization is gonna create those natural lovely sugars that we get from onion. There's my onion chopped. And for the carrot, I can leave the ends on because I am going to be sieving this out. And I'm just gonna chop these into slices. And it can be higgledy piggledy because it's just there to give it, again, that natural background sweetness that we get from those carrots. Even if you wanted to add a little bit of celery, you could do, or any other veggies that you've got, really. So the more veggies we put in, the more love we give this dish, the greater it's gonna taste. Now, guys, the bigger the wok, the better. And I'm only saying that because you're not always gonna be cooking just for yourself. As soon as someone knows you know how to cook Chinese takeaway food at home, you're gonna be cooking for the street. So, heat on. And I'm just gonna make sure my wok gets really hot before I add anything to it. Non-sticks, a little bit more forgiving, but still, nevertheless, let's cook like we're Chinese. Now, it's really, really important that when we start cooking, we fry our ingredients. As much as we're looking at softening the garlic and the onion when it goes in, and the carrot, we still need to be getting that caramelization. And so if we crowd our pan, that's not going to happen. I'm gonna add in a splash of oil, and I'm gonna get in my onion first of all. So, in that goes. Now, once my onion's in, I'm able to add my garlic. I didn't want to add the garlic at the very, very beginning because I'm not tossing this away and um, the chances are I would have burnt it. So I add my garlic in now. And this is just some finely minced garlic. The more that we chop the garlic down, the more intense the flavor. So if you're not a garlic fan, leave whole cloves and just cook off some cloves and you can pick them out. If you like that hit of garlic, chop it nice and fine and it's gonna make all the difference. So now I can get in my carrots. And now I've got to give this time for me to get those sugars out of those carrots. It's going to have to cook now for at least eight to 12 minutes. Remember, when we serve this to our friends, our family, our loved ones, we want them to go, wow, that was amazing. That was better than any curry that I've ever had. So just give it about 20 or 30 seconds, just in between stirring just so those, you know, that those vegetables are having that time on the bottom where the heat is, where it's at its most intense, just to get, you know, that, oh yeah, I'm gonna give you some sugar. <laughs> Cause that's what we're doing. <laughs> my onions have softened, my carrots have softened. The garlic has released all of that lovely flavor. Now to get the heat back up again and to get my curry powder into the pan. And we're just gonna cook that out just for a minute or so. Now, if you like a spicy curry, then use a hot curry powder. Um, personally, I go for medium. 
Um, my mum, who likes korma, would go, go for a mild curry powder. And it really is down to your own preference whether or not you like things hot or you like things a little bit more subtle. Now to this, I'm gonna add some plain flour. Now there's two tablespoons that's gonna go in and this is just gonna help that curry sauce thicken. But because we are adding raw flour, we've gotta cook this out. So I'm gonna give it another minute or so now. You've gotta watch this. We don't want things burning and this is why I'm saying you've gotta give things love and attention just until I get the liquid in. Once I get the liquid in, I can then start to relax again. So I'm just gonna turn the heat down ever so slightly, just making sure that that flour and curry powder is incorporated into these lovely softened vegetables. And then heat up, let's get the stock in. Now you can use chicken stock, beef stock, vegetable stock if we're doing a vegetarian curry. Any stock you like. While that's coming up to the boil, I've got a bay leaf, which is popping in. I've got some honey. So we'll just get all of that honey out of this little dish here. Now, if you're not a big fan of adding sugar or honeys to dishes, you could use um, agave syrup um, or a sweetener of your choice. That, you know, it really is up to you. It may alter the flavor ever so slightly. Okay, and lastly, I'm just gonna add a splash of soy sauce. This is a Chinese curry after all. So a little splash. I do like soy sauce. And now that's just gonna simmer now for another six or seven minutes. Now the simmering is just gonna help some of that liquid evaporate. Uh, it's gonna naturally thicken because of the flour that's in there. And um, the bay leaf's got time just to infuse this liquid and this liquid will become that amazing curry sauce that I'm talking about. It's simmering away. I'm just gonna take it down ever so slightly. Now, our garam masala. By adding it at the very end, we're not cooking out all of those lovely spices that are in, that's in this garam masala. And this is why we're adding it just at the very, very end, just to give, just to help that curry, give it an extra little kick. Back in China, years and years and years ago, we had the, um, Great Silk Road or the Old Silk Road, which was a trading route where the Chinese would then take their silks along the Silk Road and it'd go through Nepal and through India. And, and we get this, you know, in every single country, there's a fusion of Chinese cuisine. And that's why we've got curry. I'm just gonna grab my saucepan. I'm literally just gonna pour this curry sauce into the sieve just to get rid of all these bits because they've done their thing now. They've been cooking away now for a good 20 minutes and they've released all their natural flavors. Uh, just pop that there. And I'm just gonna push this sauce through my sieve. So, just try and save some of that. So there's my curry sauce made. Get her a quick taste ready for my beef, which is in the fridge tenderizing. If you want your beef to be melt in the mouth, try my secret method. Take your piece of beef. I prefer fillet, but the cut is entirely your choice. Slice into thin strips against the grain at a 45 degree angle, ensuring each piece is roughly the same size as this will help it cook evenly. Cutting at an angle shortens the muscle fiber, which will help make the beef more tender. Place the beef into a large bowl and add corn flour along with dark soy sauce, Chinese rice wine, and a squirt of sesame oil. Massage all of the ingredients into the beef until the liquid has been absorbed. Be patient as this can take up to two to three minutes of massaging. Cover and place into the fridge for at least two hours, but ideally overnight to marinate. Give it a good sniff as it smells amazing at this stage. I've promised you a beef curry that's gonna be amazing. That's actually gonna be better than your local Chinese takeaway. And the reason being is that our beef has been marinating in the fridge for two hours. When I put the beef in here, I want it to sizzle, I want it to spit, I want it to caramelize near enough instantly, and it will happen quickly. So everything has to be ready, yeah? My onions are chopped, my mushrooms are ready, 
I've got all my seasonings and we are going to season this for the reason being is that we've just spent all this time injecting flavor into the curry sauce. We've got to do the same now with these little veggies here. Okay. All your like ready, hand hovering, just waiting for that heat, just to get that little bit too unbearable to stay too long. And in goes the oil. Now just using my spoon, I'm just going to help break this beef apart just ever so slightly. And then be careful because this will splash and it will sizzle. And I'm just going to fan the meat out just so it's in contact with that hot wok, with the hot oil. And I, I'm just going to get it to caramelize and just color and seal it. Quick toss. Now, in a curry, your onions should be sweet but soft. So this is going to happen quickly. In go my onions. And I'm only going to soften these. So a quick toss around. I'm not really trying to get any color at the moment. I'm literally just softening. Now in goes my mushroom. A quick toss. Now, pinch of sugar. That's just going to help with those onions and that sweetness. A little pinch of salt. Now I've gone quiet because my attention is all in this pan. You know, I've taken that time to make that sauce. I've taken the time to marinate the beef. In go my peas. The peas are there more for colour than anything else. Okay. Remember, we eat with our eyes. Now, in for this lovely, rich curry sauce that we made earlier. Don't want to waste any of this. I'm going to scrape this pan out. And as soon as this comes to the boil, we're ready to go. And there we have it. My beef curry served on top of a bowl of steaming boiled rice. Now on to my Nan's favorite. Here's how I cook Nanny Nash's sweet and sour king prawns. Whenever we visited Nan down south, it was off to the Chinese takeaway and sweet and sour king prawns was definitely on the menu. So I've just got a pan of oil on here. It's about eight to 10 centimeters in depth. It's just normal vegetable oil. You could use ground nut. You could even use a rapeseed oil. Why that's doing its thing over there. On here, I have some big fat juicy king prawns. Now these are raw, deveined and peeled. You can do this at home. My amazing fishmonger um, has done it for me. So I have actually got an allergic reaction to raw shellfish these days, thanks to mum and dad and the cases and cases of king prawns that we had to peel as a child. So nice big bowl. Now the reason we use a big bowl is because I'm gonna get my hands in here in a second. I'm gonna really massage the ingredients into the king prawns to start off with. And again, it's just down to that tenderization, I guess, but it's making the king prawns even more juicy and tender when we eat them. So in go my king prawns. To this, I'm just gonna add a tiny pinch of salt. So about that much will do. And I have a beaten egg. I might not use all of this. I need just enough to coat the king prawns. So about that much will do. And now I get my hands in. And all I'm doing is massaging it into the flesh, making them even more tender and juicy than they already are. Now the egg and salt and king prawns are well and truly mixed. I have another bowl of corn flour here. Now this is going to get a little bit messy, but I'm gonna get a nice big handful of corn flour and I'm just gonna put this in and now just gently turn the king prawns in the flour. 
Now in, go, in goes for cornflour number two. And you know what? Cornflour number three. So, so you can see now the king prawns have separated in the cornflour and we've got some big fat juicy king prawns in what will be a really crispy batter. So just while I wash my hands off, this is how I made the sweet and sour sauce. In every takeaway I've worked in, the sauce has always been made in huge batches at the beginning of the week using some very familiar ingredients. Begin by adding one cup of water followed by one cup of orange juice to a saucepan, followed by sugar, rice vinegar. Alternatively, you could use white vinegar or apple cider vinegar, tomato puree and tomato ketchup. Stir over the heat to dissolve the sugar and combine all of the ingredients. Give it a quick taste. If you prefer a more tart, sweet and sour sauce, add a touch more vinegar, or if you prefer it sweeter, add more sugar, or for more of a tang, add more ketchup. Once you're happy with the taste, set to one side. Now, king prawns, they're separated. I'm just gonna bang off the excess corn flour. And as I drop it into the oil, I'm just gonna drop the prawn away from me. This then stops or prevents the splashing coming back my way if it decides to have a moment and spits at me. Right, I'm just gonna turn the oil down ever so slightly because I don't want it to boil over. Now, if you don't have a wire rack, you can get a um, plate and some kitchen paper and we can just drain the king prawns on there. And using your chopsticks or a pair of tongs, we're just gonna move the king prawns around in the oil just to make sure that they're all, they're all separate still. Which they are. Now, you can see that inside the pan now, there's quite a bit of a commotion going on. And um, this is the water escaping from the king prawns as they're frying. Now, once that dies down ever so slightly, it becomes a little less ferocious. We know that our king prawns are nearly, nearly done. So we're already getting a nice golden brown color. And king prawns only take a minute or two to cook. These are quite large king prawns, so I'm gonna give them about three minutes. So king prawns have had three minutes. They're nice and golden brown. The uh, bubbles are still bubbling, but these are king prawns. If I was to cook chicken or pork and make it, well, I would definitely cook it a little bit longer. And I'd wait for these bubbles to near enough disappear altogether. But as I want my king prawns to be juicy, I'm gonna switch off the heat and just carefully and one by one, I'm gonna pop them onto my wire rack just to drain. So let's bring this dish together. So my wok is already getting hot. Um, on this plate, I have some onion, some green pepper, some carrots, and some pineapple. Pretty much a standard vegetable platter, which is served with sweet and sour king prawns in pretty much every takeaway and Chinese restaurant. So I'm just gonna add a splash of oil into my wok. And to this, I'm just gonna throw in all of my veggies at the same time. Now I'm just gonna fry off my veggies just to get that little tiny bit of caramelization onto each of the pieces of ingredients. Now in goes our sweet and sour sauce, which we made earlier. And I'm not gonna add all of it, I'm just gonna add some of it. Now, while that's coming up to the boil, here's my thickener. Now this is literally corn flour and water. And all I'm gonna do is mix it together to create a smooth milk-like mixture. Okay, so that's my corn flour and water combined. Now it's really, really important that the mixture or the sauce is boiling before we try and thicken. So get it onto its highest setting and I'm gonna just drizzle tablespoon and a bit into the sauce and you can see that it thickens instantly. 
So my king prawns are still hot, so I'm just gonna switch off my heat. I'm gonna grab my tray, and I'm just gonna carefully pour my king prawns into my wok. And I'm just gonna toss these in that sauce. And now we can serve my nan's favorite dish. My sweet and sour king prawn Hong Kong style. They're gonna be juicy. They're plump. You can see how plump these king prawns are. They're amazing. We're gonna get that nice background of pepper taste, the sweetness from the pineapple. And I know if my nan was here now, I wouldn't even be able to get the rest of this onto the plate because our fingers would be in. <laughs> so this here really is for you, Nan. So we've got our main dishes. Now onto that Chinese takeaway classic, egg fried rice. Did you know that half the population in the world eat rice on a daily basis? That's 3.5 billion people. Now that's a lot of rice. To make the perfect fried rice, you have to start with day old boiled rice that has been kept in the fridge overnight. Start by washing your uncooked rice in warm water until the water runs clear. This may take three or four washes. Fill the pan with water so it sits approximately one inch above the top of the uncooked rice. I use my middle finger as a guide and the water comes up to my first knuckle. Place a saucepan over a high heat and bring to a rapid boil. Once the water has been completely absorbed by the rice and craters start to appear in the top, turn the heat down to low and place a lid firmly on top. Cook for a further two to three minutes, then turn off your heat. Allow the rice to steam for a further 12 minutes in the residual heat and remember, no peaking. And there we have it, perfectly boiled rice every time. We can't have a Chinese takeaway without having a rice dish of some description. So you could have boiled rice, but most of us love a fried rice. Here's my pre-prepared boiled rice. Now I cooked this yesterday. I've allowed it to cool completely. I've put it into the fridge and the best fried rice is made from cold boiled rice. So I'm gonna add a good tablespoon and a half of oil. And the first thing, I'm gonna add is my whisk egg. Now I like mine eggy. So there's two eggs in here. Just make sure we're covered and we get a bit of a splash on. And we should see egg action straight away. It's gonna start cooking because the wok's hot. So you can see how it's turning up. So there's my egg cooked already. In goes enough rice for a good portion or for two, if you're having it as part of a meal. Just give that a quick toss. Now, the key to making great fried rice is in its name. It's fried. Therefore, we've got to make sure that our woks are hot. Yeah, I'm not trying to boil rice. I'm not trying to saute rice. I'm frying it. So make sure there's lots of frying going on. I don't know if you can hear, if I get my mic nice and close to the wok, you can hear the spitting and the sizzling going on, okay? If for any unknown reason you're cooking and you can't hear that, leave it alone, okay? Just let it get it good. Let it get back into the action again. But since mine's spitting, I can keep my rice moving. And all I'm doing with the back of the spoon, and this is something that we did with the big ladles in a restaurant or a takeaway, is that any lumps, I'm just making sure that my lumps are being pressed out. And as the rice reheats, it will naturally want to fall apart and have individual grains. I'm actually gonna get my peas in now. So in they go. Now at this point, I can add my seasoning. So I'm gonna add my dries first of all, and I'm just going to add the tiniest pinch of salt. Now the reason I'm not using a lot of salt is because I'm gonna add the soy sauce. Now the soy sauce is naturally salty, especially the light. So I'm just gonna add a tiny bit for a start. And if need be, we can readjust towards the end. So back in the restaurant and takeaways I've worked at, you'd have a big range. And on this range, you'd have cooking here and cooking here, frying here, 
fried rice here. And this is where you start as a trainee chef. And all night long, you're just cooking rice. And you learn to toss a wok very quickly because that's all you're doing all night. And especially between the hours of 5 and 7 p.m., it just seems like all of you guys want to eat at the same time. And the phones would be ringing off the hook and we'll be tossing rice for a good solid two hours. That's why my forearms are like Popeyes. Okay, so now my rice is getting nice and hot. I'm going to add a splash of light soy sauce for a little bit of that umami, but predominantly seasoning. That'd be plenty. Don't waste it. Now, dark soy sauce. That's for color and that really rich, sweet umami kind of flavor. So there's about a splash gone in. And you can definitely taste the difference when you try them just individually. Keep this mixing and keep it tossing. Now I'm just going to give this a quick taste for seasoning. Oh, straight away, I'm getting that caramelization, you know, that chewiness of the rice grains. There, it's well seasoned, it tastes fantastic, and it tastes fried, which is really important. Okay, so wok off. Now, sesame oil, don't use it to cook with, we use it to season or marinade. So, a little squidge of sesame oil, a quick toss around. And I'll grab my bowl and we've got egg fried rice in about three minutes. My Chinese style or Chinese takeaway style, egg fried rice. I think this is the perfect weekend accompaniment. Last thing to do, chopstick out and let's tuck in. And that's three dishes to make any weekend complete. My mouth-watering Chinese beef curry, Nanny Nash's favorite sweet and sour king prawns, and the nation's favorite egg fried rice to bring all three dishes together.